Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so uh, let us continue with our discussion. Um, so let me remind you where we were uh, at the end of the last lecture. Um, so we had taken X uh, Riemann surface with uh, uh, covering uh, the complex plane. Okay, so of course uh, this implies that. Uh, uh, so the, so uh, if I call the covering as um, uh, if I call the covering map as P from C to X since the complex plane is simply connected this is also the universal covering. So, this implies it is a universal covering for X ok and uh, if I fix up point small x in capital X then uh, you know that the fundamental group uh, of capital X based at small x can be identified with the deck transformation group of the covering uh, and uh, the deck transformation group is a subgroup of the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal cover which in this case is the complex plane and uh, this uh, the automorphisms the holomorphic automorphisms of the complex plane are uh, upper triangular Mobius transformations uh, those Mobius transformations which uh, when represented in matrix form are upper triangular. So, they will be uh, given by uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, matrices. So, uh, so A D A D equal to 1 and of course, you have to go mod uh, plus or minus uh, the identity matrix the subgroup uh, two element subgroup ok. Um, in fact uh, what happens is that uh, deck tra uh, the deck transformation group actually lands even in a smaller subgroup than this namely the subgroup of translations that is because you know you know that uh, uh, any deck transformation cannot have fixed points unless it is identity transformation ok it cannot have even a single fixed point. Therefore, if you take a non trivial deck transformation uh, it should be it should be a mobius transformation that uh, goes from c to c and has no fixed point okay and uh, of course uh, as a general mobius transformation it should fix infinity the point at infinity so it has to be a translation okay so the moral of the story is there is the subgroup uh, so the subgroup of translations which is uh, which can be written actually in the form uh, uh, 1 uh, b 0 1 uh, b in c this is a subgroup here ok and this is actually the uh, this is just the set of translations by uh, complex numbers ok where of course, uh, uh, translation by b is just the map that sends z to z plus b ok and uh, the the image of this will actually land inside this ok. So, this uh, uh, this image here what you will get is uh, it will this uh, the image of the subgroup will actually land inside this subgroup ok and uh, you know I can further identify uh, this with uh, I can identify this uh, with complex numbers by just sending uh, T sub B to B ok. So, you just send uh, T sub B to B and of course, T sub B is being thought of as the Mobius transformation uh, it is a Mobius transformation Z going to Z plus B which has this matrix representation uh, given by 1 B 0 1 ok. So, and uh, this will give you uh, an isomorphism of uh, groups 
uh, and of course, uh, here uh, uh, it is going to be a group under addition and therefore, uh, first of all uh, the first observation that one makes is that pi 1 has to be abelian okay, because it uh, the, the pi 1 is a subgroup of this group of translations and uh, translations commute with one another and therefore, uh, this is an abelian group and therefore, pi 1 is abelian. So, this condition that uh, x is a Riemann surface with uh, universal covering C automatically forces that the fundamental group of x has to be abelian. Okay. So, uh, and uh, well, uh, so uh, image of pi 1 of uh, capital X comma small x in C comma plus uh, uh, let let the image be equal to G. Okay, let us call it as G. Uh, so, uh, of course, we get this uh, 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 pi one of X has to be abelian. Okay, and uh, what else did we see last time? Uh, last time we proved that. Uh, this G uh, which is a subset of uh, uh, complex numbers it is a subgroup under addition okay. uh, this G is actually uh, as a set uh, of complex numbers it is discrete. Okay. So, G is discrete and another thing that we also noticed was that G is a Z sub module of C that is uh, if a translation if, if you take an element of G which corresponds to a translation then all integer uh, uh, multiples of uh, uh, if you compose a translation so many times okay you are going to just get another translation which is integer multiples of trans uh, translation by integer multiple of the original number okay so what what i'm saying is if t sub b is in g then t sub n times b is also in g which is just t sub b composed n times assuming n is positive of course, if n is negative then you you have to compose t minus b uh, t sub minus b minus n times okay. and of course, t sub b uh, uh, compose 0 times is to be taken as t sub 0 which is just the identity map right. So, uh, so what we uh, g is uh, g is a discrete uh, z sub module of uh, c Okay, we have seen this and then I was uh, uh, give, telling you about this lemma which says that uh, there are there are only uh, 3 possibilities for G number 1 of course, the trivial possibility that G is just the 0 uh, group the trivial group that means it consists of only the identity mapping okay, translation by a 0. Okay. The second thing is G is just integer multiples of a single non-zero complex number, uh, omega, uh, a non-zero complex number. Okay, and then the third possibility uh, is that G is uh, integer. It's an integer linear combination of two complex numbers, where uh, both the complex numbers are non-zero. and uh, their ratio uh, is not a real number that means they are uh, linearly independent as elements of uh, linearly independent over r over real over reals as elements of the uh, field of complex numbers okay so these are the only three possibilities okay and uh, so let's try to establish this proof so uh, the first thing i want to say is uh, of course let's assume g is not zero okay if uh, G is not equal to zero. Okay, um, we uh, we look at uh, the set uh, set of all Z in C uh, such that mod Z is less than or equal to capital R intersection G. Okay. Uh, uh, which is which is uh, non uh, empty for uh, for r large enough okay 
so if g is not 0 then g has uh, some element. So uh, all you have to do is you have to choose capital R greater than the modulus of that element and then uh, this intersection will contain that element okay. So there is a, you can choose R sufficiently large so that this is non empty okay. Uh, now uh, the point is that uh, this intersection will turn out to be finite okay the point is that this intersection will turn out to be finite why is that so that is because first of all uh, note that note that uh, 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 G in C is closed okay the uh, the set uh, of points G is closed because you know you get a uh, you get a, the closure of a set by adding to the set accumulation points okay but G has no accumulation points G is just a discrete set okay. So uh, G is equal to its closure so it is closed okay so the G is, is a closed set as uh, it is it has uh, no accumulation points in C that is what we proved last time that is how we proved G is discrete okay and uh, then uh, this uh, this uh, set here this is just a disc of uh, a radius less than or equal to r it is a closed disc so it is a closed set okay it is already this is also a closed set of the complex closed subset of the complex plane this is an intersection of two closed sets and therefore it is closed okay. Uh, uh, so uh, this set the set of all z in C such that mod z less than or equal to r intersection G is closed okay but it is obviously bounded because uh, it is a subset of this closed disc of bounded radius so it is closed and bounded and therefore you can conclude that it is compact okay so it is also it is also bounded hence compact therefore it is a compact set okay now you see take every point see every point of G is an isolated point. So you can find a small uh, you know uh, disc surrounding that point which open disc if you want surrounding that point that does not contain any other points of G okay. Now you, you take all those discs corresponding to the points in this intersection that will be an open cover for this intersection but it is compact so there must be a finite sub cover and that will force that this has to be finite okay. So since uh, uh, so, so let me write that here uh, since uh, uh, G, G is discrete uh, cons consists only of isolated points, points this set uh, uh, set of all Z in C such that mod Z less than or equal to R intersection G is finite it is a finite set. In fact you know that uh, uh, this closed disc is compact okay and uh, you know that if there is a if you take any infinite subset it should have an accumulation point. So that will also that is also another way of saying that this intersection has to be finite okay. So it is finite so what I can do is I can choose uh, a member here which is closest to the origin okay it is a finite set of complex numbers okay and it is non empty okay and uh, it contains a non zero complex number okay because g I have assumed g is not zero. So uh, and you know I have chosen r uh, in in, a, in such a way so that there is at least one non zero complex number in this set g okay. So I can choose uh, I can choose a complex number in this intersection such that it has minimum modulus okay and let me call that as omega 1. So let omega 1 be uh, an element uh, in this set with mod omega 1 not equal to 0 and mod omega 1 minimum because it is a finite set I, I can of course choose one such element okay. Uh, uh, now omega 1 is an element of G this implies Z dot omega 1 will also be uh, subset of G okay. 
that is because g is a z sub module of c all right. And uh, of course, if z dot omega 1 is equal to g we are done we have we have come to case 2 ok. So, uh, if z dot omega 1 is equal to g we are done we are done. Uh, so, assume z dot omega 1 is uh, properly contained in g ok. Then I will have to show uh, that we are we will uh, be in the third case ok of the lemma all right so uh, so if this is true uh, again we play the same game we play the same game what you do is uh, consider uh, uh, the set again you take the set of all z in c such that mod z is get less than or equal to some r prime now and intersect it with g minus uh, the complement of z dot omega 1 in g ok. So, what is this set this is uh, this is all those elements of g which are not an integer multiple of omega 1 ok that is what this set is and then I am intersecting it with this closed disc ok. And since uh, there are elements of g which are not integer multiples of omega 1 this is a non empty set and therefore, if I choose r prime sufficiently large this intersection will be non empty ok. So, consider the set which is which is uh, non empty for r prime sufficiently large ok. Consider this set. Now, again uh, the same argument will tell you that this set is also finite why because you see the uh, uh, what will happen is that you see this is a dis this uh, g is discrete ok every subset of a discrete set is continues to be that continues to be discrete. And so, this is a discrete set in this uh, closed and bounded uh, uh, disc ok. So, it has to be finite and of course, again the argument will be if it were not finite then you know every uh, uh, every infinite subset of a uh, uh, of a compact set like this will contain a an accumulation point, but we know g has no accumulation points. Therefore, this has this has to be again finite set ok. Uh, this has to be this has to be again again a finite set ok. This has to be again a finite set alright um, and uh, 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 choose choose omega 2 in this set in this set. So, that you know uh, uh, omega 2 is not 0 and modulus of omega 2 is uh, is minimum ok. Now, in this set you choose an omega 2 which means you know it is it is a it is a it is an element of g which is not an integer multiple of omega 1 ok. And of course, uh, since there are only finitely many I choose one with minimum modulus that I can do all right. Uh, of course, omega 2 is non 0 hmm. now now we are going to uh, now I am going to and uh, now I am going to show that g is actually z omega 1 plus z omega 2 ok that is what I am going to prove. So, for, for the first for, for firstly uh, we claim we claim that uh, 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 omega 2 by omega 1 ok is not a real number ok. The first claim I am making is that omega 2 by omega 1 is not a real number for if it were if it were then there would exist an integer there would exist an integer n with you know n strictly less than omega 2 by omega 1 strictly less than n plus 1 you can get this. See if you have a real number <coughs> then of course, it can you can uh, it, it has to lie in some interval ok and you will have strict inequality here because omega 2 is not uh, an integer multiple of omega 1 ok omega you cannot have n equal to omega 2 by omega 1 because that will mean omega 2 is n times omega 1 that is not possible because omega 2 has been chosen outside of 
integer multiples of omega 1 and for the same reason omega 2 by omega 1 cannot also be equal to n plus 1 ok. So, it is these two are both strict inequalities, but this will immediately give you a contradiction that is because you see what will happen is you know if I write if I consider uh, 1 by mod omega 1 times modulus of uh, n omega 1 minus omega 2 if I calculate this ok then this will be this will be modulus of n minus omega 2 by omega 1 ok and uh, you see uh, n my see of course n minus omega 2 by but omega 2 by omega 1 is greater than n. So, this will be actually be omega 2 by omega 1 minus n that is what it will be because omega 2 by omega 1 is a real number greater than n all right and of course you see but anyway this is lying in an interval of length 1 therefore this has to be less than 1 ok. So, this is less than 1. So, what this will tell you it is that it will tell you n omega 1 minus omega 2 is strictly less than omega mod omega 1 ok that is what it will tell you it will tell you n omega 1 minus omega 2 is strictly less than mod omega 1, but you see this the this element this belongs to g ok. So, what you have done is you have found an element of g whose modulus is less than mod omega 1, but mind you mod omega 1 was chosen with uh, minimum modulus ok mod omega 1 was chosen with minimum modulus see it does not see once I have done once I have chosen mod omega 1 I can still increase r I can let r to go to infinity it is not going to change the choice of this mod omega 1 ok. So, mod omega 1 is kind of uh, smallest it is it is one it is it is one with smallest modulus, but you see now I have gotten hold of an element of g with modulus lesser than mod omega 1 that is a contradiction ok. So, contradicts contradicts choice of omega 1 ok. So, this contradiction will tell you that omega 2 by omega 1 cannot be real ok. So, omega 2 by omega 1 is not a real number ok. So, you get that. Now, the next thing is uh, the moment omega 2 by omega 1 is not a real number it means that omega 1 and omega 2 are they form a basis for the complex numbers as a vector space over real numbers because you see they are they are they are, since the ratio is not real they are linearly independent over r ok and uh, uh, it is linearly independent there are two elements and the dimension of the complex numbers as a field over the real numbers is two dimensional. So, the moment you have a linearly independent set with cardinality equal to the dimension it has to be a basis ok. So, uh, so this will imply that you know uh, uh, omega 1 comma omega 2 is uh, is an R basis for for the for the for complex number C as a vector space over R as vector space over R ok. Now, so what does that that implies every every complex number uh, 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 can be uh, is a un is a unique uh, is uh, uh, a unique linear combination a unique R linear combination combination of omega 1 and omega 2 that is what basis means every element can be expressed as a linear combination of omega 1 and omega 2 and uh, the coefficients of omega 1 and omega 2 are unique ok. So, but this happens for every complex number so it also happens for every element of g after all g is a subset of complex numbers. So, so, so this implies if if you take a small g in capital G then g has to be writable in the form lambda 1 omega 1 plus lambda 2 omega 2 where lambda i are real numbers ok. I should be able to write any element of g in this form ok as a real linear combination of omega 1 and omega 2 and the uh, the coefficients lambda 1 and lambda 2 are unique that is because of linear independence of omega 1 and omega 2 ok. Now, uh, well uh, again lambda 1 and lambda 2 are real numbers ok. So, I can choose for both lambda 1 and lambda 2 I choose an integer that is closest to lambda 1 and I choose an integer that is closest to lambda 2 ok. So, I will write that down choose 
m1 comma m2 uh, integers with modulus of lambda 1 minus m1 less than or equal to half modulus of lambda 2 minus m2 less than or equal to half I can do this of course you see lambda 1 is a real number it has to lie in some interval okay. So uh, the it is it is an interval with integer endpoints. okay. So if uh, it lies to the closer to the left end point you take that as uh, your m1 okay. If it will rise closer to the right end point you take that as your m2 in any case you can get m1 m2 with these bounds all right. Then uh, uh, and 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 once I do this uh, and now I want you to look at uh, g minus uh, m1 uh, omega 1 minus m2 omega 2. I want you to look at this difference okay. This turns out to be lambda 1 minus m1 into omega 1 plus lambda 2 minus m2 m2 into omega 2 okay by our definition all right and now let us compute the modulus of of this difference and try to use the triangle inequality okay. So 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 modulus of g will be modulus of uh, modulus of sorry g minus uh, m1 omega 1 minus m2 omega 2 will be modulus of lambda 1 minus m1 into omega 1 plus lambda 2 minus m2 into omega 2 okay and now if I apply the triangle inequality this is less than or equal to modulus of lambda 1 minus m1 uh, uh, omega 1 plus modulus of lambda 2 minus m2 into omega 2. I will get this by the triangle inequality mod of a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b okay. And what I want to say is that I want to say that this is actually strictly a strict inequality. Why is this a strict inequality because you see uh, uh, this is a strict inequality uh, because you see mod of a plus b is equal to mod a plus mod b okay for two complex numbers a and b occurs only when a and b are real multiples of one another okay. There is a collinearity condition for uh, the three sides of a triangle uh, to that makes the, uh, the the for the uh, uh, that makes the triangle degenerate into a straight line and then your triangle inequality becomes an equality that is the only case okay. So because this happens only when a is a real multiple of b okay. So you know if this does not does not happen if there is equality it will tell you that you know it will tell you that uh, uh, you know uh, if there is an equality here it will tell you this is a real multiple of that okay. But then these are real questions so it will tell you omega 1 is a real multiple of omega 2 but that contradicts the fact that the ratio omega 2 by omega 1 is not a real number okay. Therefore this uh, this in this triangle inequality this has to be a strict inequality okay. So what I can write is that modulus of g minus m1 omega 1 minus m2 omega 2 is strictly less than mod lambda 1 minus omega 1 uh, m1 uh, lambda 1 minus m1 times omega 1 plus mod lambda 2 minus m2 into omega 2 and this is strictly less than or equal to half mod omega 1 plus half mod omega 2 that is because mod lambda 1 minus m1 and mod lambda 2 minus m2 are each less than or equal to half okay. Now uh, you see let us recall how omega 1 and omega 2 were chosen. Omega 1 was chosen to be an element of g with least uh, modulus which is uh, non-zero okay and omega 2 was chosen to be again of least modulus of course non-zero modulus among those elements of g which are not in integer multiples of uh, omega 1 okay now therefore i can write that this is less than uh, half omega 2 
plus half omega 2 which is equal to omega 2 okay. And therefore, you see this quantity on the, the I mean this this <coughs> this this element on the left side g minus m 1 omega 1 minus m 2 omega 2 you see this cannot be this cannot be an element of uh, uh, g which is not an integer multiple of omega 1 because if it were then it would have modulus less than uh, mod omega 2 which is against the choice of uh, uh, omega 2. Therefore, the conclusion is that this quantity has to be an integer multiple of omega 1 okay. and that will tell you that g is therefore an a lean integer linear combination of omega 1 and omega 2. So, let me write that down here uh, uh, this is uh, uh, an element of g of g uh, which has to which has to belong which has to be an integer multiple of omega 1 for if it is not an integer multiple of omega 1 then it will be an element with modulus less than uh, that of omega 2 which is against the very choice of omega 2 okay. So, it is an integer multiple of omega 1 that is so if I write it down I will get g is equal to g minus m 1 omega 1 minus m 2 omega 2 is actually say some n times omega 1 and this will tell you that g is actually uh, m 1 plus n uh, times omega 1 plus m 2 times omega 2 and in other words what you will get is uh, uh, therefore, g is an integer mu multiple of uh, omega 1 and omega 2 uh, it is an integer linear combination of omega 1 and omega 2 and therefore, you will get g is actually z dot omega 1 uh, plus z dot omega 2 as we wanted okay. So, that finishes the proof of this claim that uh, uh, g is uh, just the group of uh, uh, li integer linear combinations of omega 1 and omega 2 okay. And of course, you must realize that this is isomorphic to z cross z as a group under addition okay. So, that finishes the proof of the claim. Now, what we are going to do is uh, use this lemma to get all the results that we want. So, what I will do is uh, uh, let, let me rub this off and look at each of these cases okay. So, uh, so you see remember that our situation was we had c to p uh, c to x p is a covering map this is the universal covering this was this was our situation. Uh, if uh, uh, g is 0 okay if g is 0 then what happens? See if g is 0 that means pi 1 of x capital X comma small x is 0 after all g is the image of pi 1 okay. If you remember pi 1 uh, the fundamental group of the base was identified with the deck transformation group the deck transformation group was identified with the subgroup of translations and the image of the deck transformation group is what uh, we had called as g g is isomorphic to pi 1 okay g is just the image isomorphic image of pi 1. So, if g is 0 then pi 1 is 0 if pi 1 is 0 it means x is simply connected and you know if x is simply connected then you know x to x itself the identity mapping itself is a covering map and you know by uni uh, by unique uh, by the uni uniqueness property of universal coverings it will tell you that x has to be holomorphic to c okay. So, uh, then x is simply connected. So, uh, x to x identity map is a universal covering and this will imply that therefore, you know uh, c to p is isomorphic to the, uh, the, the covering given by the identity map and this will imply that x is uh, holomorphic to c. So, uh, so if g is 0 okay. So, what we have proved is if you have a if, you have, if the universal covering of x is uh, 
uh, C and if the fundamental group is 0 then uh, that corresponds to this case and uh, then x has to be just C okay this is the simplest case okay. Then uh, of course you know what to expect in the other two cases so let me write it down. So if if g is z dot omega 1 okay if g is z of the omega 1 then then actually what it means is then pi 1 x comma x is identified with the deck transformation group uh, of this covering and this is just uh, z times translation by omega okay. Mind you that is how we identified a deck transformation with a translation yeah. we found that all possible deck transformations can only be translations okay and uh, uh, the complex number omega corresponds to translation by omega so this is what it is and uh, then what happens then what happens we have that uh, uh, we have uh, see the, let me recall another fact that I told you last time see we have C to uh, P uh, C to X this is the covering I told you C to C modulo the deck transformation group okay of this cover these two can be identified uh, such that this diagram commutes. So in fact you know I told you that uh, 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 the if you take uh, the fundamental group of the base space base space space below that gets identified with the subgroup of uh, automorphisms of the base of, of the covering space okay that subgroup is nothing but the deck transformation group and if you go modulo the deck transformation go group what you will get back can be identified with the base space okay. So this can be identified with x but then you know this is this is just c modulo z dot t omega okay and if you remember this was c sub omega in one of our earlier examples this is this is the this is a, a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder. Uh, defined by this non-zero complex number omega. So this is Riemann surface structure on a cylinder uh, defined by o, omega not equal to zero. Okay. So what you're saying is that uh, uh, if uh, the universal covering of X is C, and if the fundamental group is isomorphic to z okay then we are in case 2 and your Riemann surface x is nothing but a holomorphic structure a holomorphic uh, uh, structure namely a Riemann surface structure on the uh, real cylinder okay. So in fact uh, if you want I will say a real cylinder on a, on a real cylinder okay and uh, uh, in fact you know I uh, so this first tells you that x has to be just a, a Riemann surface structure on a cylinder. Then I gave you if you go back and recall I gave you a theorem saying that all these uh, various holomorphic structures that you can get on a real cylinder if you change omega they all do not change they are all the same okay. So I, I made that statement also so let us try to prove it. So what I want to say is that if you change omega here okay still this uh, the various uh, uh, the various x you are going to get for different omega okay they are all going to be the same in fact I told you that there is one special representative that is given by the exponential map as a covering map from C to C star I told you that was the special representative for all the Riemann surface structures uh, on a real cylinder okay. So let us try to prove that okay let us try to prove that so uh, first of all I what I want to say is that uh, um, so I want to first make a, uh, I want to make a remark uh, see let us take uh, from C to uh, uh, let me take map take the map from C to C star okay which is given by z going to exponential of uh, uh, 2 pi i z by omega okay let us take this map. C to C star z going to e power 
2 pi i z by omega I can divide by omega because omega is not 0 alright. Now what you can do is that you can easily check that this is a covering map therefore it is a universal covering okay and you can check that the uh, 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 you can check that the deck transformation group is just translation by integers okay because that is uh, that is what uh, see the kernel of this map is exactly the integers okay the kernel of this map is exactly the integers alright. So when uh, 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 integer times omega so what I want to say is that uh, um, so let me write that down check uh, this is a covering map. hence uh, the universal covering because uh, the space above C is uh, simply connected you check that it is a covering map okay uh, for this you just have to study the properties of the exponential function is it f of z equal to e power z okay if you study properties of the exponential function you will see that uh, uh, mind you omega is a constant omega is to be treated as a constant z is a variable alright. So properties of exp exponential map will tell you that this is a universal covering alright then uh, th that is one thing you will get the second thing is uh, you will you can see that the uh, the the uh, uh, the deck transformation group group is just z dot translation by omega <laughs> that is translation by integer multiples of omega okay it is just translation by integer multiples of omega okay. So if z is an integer multiple of omega alright then uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be 1 okay this is going to be 1 if z is n omega I will get e power 2 pi i n that will be 1 alright. So uh, so what these two things will tell you is that uh, this is uh, 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 now that put together with this remark will tell you that C uh, modulo z dot translation by omega is just C star okay. So in other words what it will tell you is that x has to be just holomorphic to C star okay. So, uh, so let me write that down so, so thus C uh, to C star by this map uh, can be identified with C to C mod z dot uh, t sub omega this is the group of integer tra translation by integer uh, multiples of omega this can be identified okay this is uh, this is our map uh, uh, this is our map uh, well if, if you want let me call this as uh, this is p sub omega okay all right and if I call this map as x alright uh, so this is still x and this is uh, p sub omega okay. So uh, what these two diagrams together will tell you is that this covering seat so it will first tell you that x is just uh, homeo uh, is actually not only homeomorphic <laughs> but it is actually holomorphically isomorphic to c star okay and it will tell you that c to x uh, this universal covering is the same as uh, this uh, universal covering C to C star okay. So uh, uh, therefore x is holomorphic I mean by holomorphic holomorphically isomorphic to C star okay x is holomorphically isomorphic to C star right in fact I told you that uh, uh, you can scale this omega and just 
make this map the uh, exponential map which is just z going to e power 2 pi i z uh, that that is what I gave as the canonical representative for all in the in the holomorphic isomorphism class for all these Riemann surfaces okay. So, let me explain how that happens okay because there is something there is a little bit of uh, covering theory that comes into the picture okay. So, so let me make this claim claim uh, uh, C T x is isomorphic uh, as covering spaces to C C star z going to exponential of 2 pi i z okay. So, this is the statement that I made you take all possible uh, Riemann surface structures on a cylinder then uh, they are all isomorphic and uh, they are all uh, isomorphic just to C star okay that is the theorem that I stated. And now I am saying that even at the covering space level uh, uh, not only is not only is x isom, uh, isomorphic to C star uh, holomorphic isomorphic this covering itself <coughs> is isomorphic to the exponential map okay. So, uh, in fact I told you that uh, this was this can be taken as a special representative for all these uh, uh, holomorphic structures on the uh, 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 cylinder Riemann surface structures on a cylinder okay. So, let us see how this is true. So, for this I am going to do something uh, uh, there is a little bit of a discussion. So, let us again go back to our uh, uh, let us go back to the topological category okay. Let us take a covering let us take a topological space x okay. Uh, uh, now, so do not confuse this x with our x forget our x for the present let us assume that uh, we have a topological universal covering okay and uh, you fix this point small x in capital X then you know that the fundamental group uh, of the base space can be identified with uh, it can be identified with the deck transformation group of the universal cover okay which is subgroup of automorphisms. Uh, let me just say homium uh, I will just put automorphisms of the universal covering space. Of course, you know if this is a holomorphic covering okay then this will this will be a holomorphic automorphisms and everything will be holomorphic. If it is uh, just a topological covering then these are all just homeomorphisms all right and uh, now what I am going to do is I am going to twist the covering by a by an automorphism of the universal cover okay. So, what I am going to do is the following so what I am going to do is the following choose a phi which is an automorphism of the universal covering okay. Then you see see x to x sub unit uh, p this is a covering all right then what I will do is I will put this phi here and I will consider this map which is the composition first apply phi inverse then apply p okay. Now what will happen is that this will also be a covering map this will also be a universal covering after all this is an isomorphism and this is a covering an isomorphism followed by a covering is also a covering. So, this is also a covering but uh, this is again uh, simply connected so it is also the universal covering. So, this is also another another avatar of the universal covering all right. Now what will happen is because of this uh, the fundamental group of x will also be identified here okay and there is a difference in these two identifications that difference arises because of this uh, automorphism phi and what that difference is it is actually conjugation by phi okay. So, that is what I want you to realize. So, so, this will give rise to a diagram like this. So, I have the fundamental group of capital X based at small x. So, I fix a point small x in capital X and this is identified with the deck transformation group 
of this covering uh, x unif uh, p x okay and this identification is because of this covering okay. Now this covering will give me another identification. So what I will have here is I will also have deck transformations of the other covering that is x sub unif to now this covering is p followed by phi inverse okay. So there is also an identification like this okay. So this covering gives me identification of the fundamental group of x with uh, the deck transformation group of this cover and similarly this covering gives me an identification of x uh, identification of the fundamental group of x with the deck transformation group of this covering okay and what is this map this map is just the isomorphism that sends any f to you know phi inverse sir followed by f followed by phi okay so it is it is very clear see if you give me a deck transformation here something that permutes the decks here how do I get one here I go by phi inverse apply this deck transformation and then apply phi that is how this is related. So what this tells you is that if you change the universal cover okay by an automorphism of the universal covering space okay the top space the covering space then the deck transformation group will change by a conjugate where it will change by a conjugate subgroup in the group of automorphisms of the universal cover. So what this will tell you is thus deck the deck transformation of x to uh, p, p composed with phi inverse uh, x sub unif to x is a conjugate of you see the deck transformation group of the original cover in the group of automorphisms of the universal cover okay. So uh, the in other words you know this is merely uh, one should say a ref, pro, philosophically a reflection of the fact that you see the, the fundamental group will change by uh, a conjugate if you change the base point okay. So uh, what you do is the same kind of thing happens above if you change the uh, the covering by an automorphism of the top space okay then the deck transformation group will change by a conjugate okay. So if you remember this it is very very easy to actually see that this uh, uh, translation by but translation by any omega is conjugate to translation by 1 in the full group of automorphisms of C okay. So uh, uh, so what I want to say is that translation by omega is conjugate to translation by 1 in automorphisms of C which is uh, P delta 2 C okay which is of course you know the set of all matrices of the form A B these are all just uh, translations uh, A B 0 C such that uh, A B 0 D such that A D equal to 1 modulo uh, plus or minus identity to identity matrix okay and how do you how do you prove this it is it is very simple uh, so let me write that down. So see you just solve for you solve for such a uh, transformation okay. So what you do is solve for A B 0 D with A D equal to 1 uh, A B 0 D if you conjugate that with translation by omega which is given by 1 omega 0 1 and if I put A B 0 D inverse I want to get 1 1 0 1 which is translation by 1 okay. So you can solve for this uh, you can you can you will get uh, A B 0 D to be of uh, you can it is a simple calculation what you will get is let me write it down it is just going to be 
uh, it is just going to be uh, 1 by root omega b 1 by root omega uh, b 0 root of omega okay, where b is any complex number any any such uh, mind you omega is non zero uh, so it has a square root choose any one square root that is two square roots and you take 1 by root omega and root omega here okay now this is clearly determinant one and this is a mobius transformation okay so now let me call this uh, let me call this as uh, let me call this mobius transformation as phi okay let me call phi to be this mobius transformation then phi is what phi is an automorphism of c which is a universal covering all right so now look at this you have c okay and you have p and you have x okay and then i apply this phi here i have this automorphism of c okay and here i get i get the other covering just like that i get p circle phi inverse this diagram commutes okay now uh, the moment this diagram commutes uh, you are going to have an identification of a deck transformation group uh, with the deck the deck transformation of group with of this with the deck transformation group of group with this and what it will tell you see that will tell you that uh, deck transformation group of uh, uh, c p x is uh, this group this group if you conjugate it by phi you get that group okay so phi so let me write that so i'll write it as phi circle deck circle phi inverse is actually deck uh, transformation of c to this is p circle phi inverse okay i'll get this okay and in other words what i'll get is phi circle this is uh, uh, z dot t omega is just z dot t sub 1 okay. So, uh, that means that for this covering for this covering the you are actually going modulo translations by 1 okay and if you are going modulo translations uh, trans I mean translations by integer multiples of 1 which is just translation by integers okay and if you are going modulo translations by integers then this covering th is the same as uh, is isomorphic to the covering z going to e exponential of 2 pi i z because this is the map when you are going modulo translations by integer multiples of omega if omega is 1 then this covering map will be just z going to exponential of 2 pi i z. So, what this will tell you is that uh, this guy uh, this guy uh, is isomorphic to the covering c to c star which is given by z going to exponential of 2 pi i z because here the deck transformation group is just translation by integer multiples of 1 translation by integers. So, the moral of the whole story is take any Riemann surface whose universal cover is uh, C the complex plane and assume that the fundamental group is isomorphic to Z then that covering itself not only is that Riemann surface isomorphic to C star, but the covering itself is isomorphic to this specific covering okay. So, this is this unique representative for all possible uh, 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 covering spaces of holomorphic structures on a uh, real cylinder Riemann surface structures on a real cylinder okay. So, uh, so that ends it and finally, let me uh, look at the third case the last and final case namely when uh, G is uh, isomorphic to Z dot omega 1 plus z dot omega 2 you know uh, that in this case we are going to get a complex torus okay. So, uh, if uh, uh, g uh, is z dot translation by omega 1 plus z dot translation by omega 2 then uh, 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 c p x is identified 
is isomorphic to uh, C uh, C mod Z dot translation by omega 1 plus uh, Z dot translation by omega 2 which is Riemann surface structure on a torus on a real torus okay. So, this is the third case. So, the moral of the story is uh, whenever the universal covering of a Riemann surface is the complex numbers then either it is that Riemann surface is either the complex numbers itself or it is C star and the covering is just given by the exponential map okay or it is a Riemann surface structure on a complex torus okay and these three cases corresponding they correspond to the fundamental group of the Riemann surface being 0 or isomorphic to Z or isomorphic to Z cross Z okay. So, that is the that was the classification theorem that I gave earlier okay and this is the proof okay. So, you can appreciate the elements of uh, topology and covering spaces coming to the picture okay yeah. So, I will stop here.